um, some of some of the companies building the metaverse. So some of you might be familiar with some of the companies here. There are a lot of companies that are already starting to do this. Uh, so over the last 10, 20 years, uh, there have been various implementations of uh, the virtual reality worlds. Like I mentioned, the, the name Second Life. Those of you who are in gaming, you have heard of MMOs, right? M massively multiplayer online. Uh, it could be RPGs or it could be uh, MOBAs or, you know, there's so many different types of, um, of multiplayer games where you interact with each other virtually. But the metaverse is uh, building on what, Second Life actually came and created for us uh, long ago. And now with all the new technologies, uh, this is a, a, a new environment that's being built up. Okay, so uh, there are hardware interfaces, displays, uh, virtual worlds, like I mentioned, and then all sorts of engines being created, software, hardware. Uh, then there are already financial companies that are creating assets within this. Uh, of course, avatars uh, is very interesting. You could you choose a robot, for example, to be your, your face. You could create an animal. Uh, you could create a meme. You know, it could be anything that can represent you in the in the real in the virtual world, the metaverse. And of course, uh, financial services is going to be very important as well because then you can interact um, on a much more textured kind of environment uh, within this metaverse. Now, there are what we call seven layers uh, of the metaverse. Uh, infrastructure layer is where you need a very high, high tech, uh, fast connections in order to be able to interact well. Uh, those of you who have been to Korea, uh, Korea is, I think, the best adopter of uh, 5G in the world right now. So there are very, very high speed uh, devices that can uh, interact. The rest of the world is slowly catching up. Of course, there are still countries in 2G, there are countries in 3G, there are countries that are closer, which are in 4G. But not many countries have adopted 5G yet. So 5G is going to be important and the next generations after that. Because you, in order to have a very uh, good experience in a virtual environment, in a game environment, in a metaverse, you will need a very good infrastructure layer. So that's a, a 6G cloud uh, and you must have all the hardware materials that can create the, the environment for you. Now on the human interface, uh, Google uh, has their Google Glass, uh, Facebook has their Oculus, you know, mobile devices, uh, of course, very important. Uh, wearables, you know, uh, Apple has its watch, Samsung has its watch. All these things are going to be very uh, key in the metaverse as well. Um, then your gestures, your voice, all these things can be detected by the hardware devices that are being uh, designed right now and improved on. Decentralized layer, uh, decentralization layer is uh, about edge computing, AI, microservices, and blockchain. So blockchain is very, very important for this space as well because of decentralization. Uh, security is very important. Uh, you don't, don't want identity theft and you don't want uh, your privacy to be impinged on. So it's important for all the players, all the people in, uh, who are uh, interacting with this uh, virtual environment. Uh, you know, I, I, I now remember another movie that uh, was was uh, uh, about this kind of a lifestyle, right? Uh, Ready Player One. I don't know how many of you have watched that as well. So just think of Metaverse as a, a more improved version of Second Life meets Ready Player One, right? That's something like that. Spatial computing, of course, is important as well because it's uh, important to create this environment in a very nice textured uh, manner. Uh, so you have 3D engines. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you have a VR, AR, and now there's XR as well. Uh, multitasking, uh, geospatial and mapping, all these are important because you need to both interact with your virtual environment. Uh, now homes can be already be created on Facebook's uh, metaverse, right? You can go and create your own already. There are a few templates. But eventually, you also want to design your home to look like your actual home, right? And so you can put in uh, items and systems in there as well. You can drag uh, feeds from uh, widgets and feeds from uh, TV, movies, you know, like this kind of data feeds. Uh, so all these things are uh, going to be uh, possible in the metaverse. Uh, creator economy, of course, is important. Today, the topical issue is uh, NFTs. So, so many creators are coming back out uh, and making a second pot of gold, right, by creating and selling their items online as NFTs. Now, a creator economy is very important because one company cannot create everything in the metaverse. Everyone needs to be able to co-create and uh, be able to expand. So it has to be an open source kind of a platform once the uh, infrastructure and the tool sets are created. So software development kits and open APIs to connect are going to be very important as well. 
So uh, discovery, uh, this is where it's, it's all about today's world, right? Your, your, your consciousness when you're surfing the internet will be impinged upon by, uh, ad, by advertisements. And ironically, you know, Facebook is one of the biggest culprits of that. Uh, they, they make, I, I think this year, they made like over $100 billion from all their ads. So of course, this is going to be uh, something that would drive the metaverse as well. Uh, definitely, if Facebook leading it, right? So you have ad networks, uh, you have your social uh, media. Uh, almost every uh, Gen Z or millennial is uh, on social networks. Uh, that's going to be very important as well. But earlier I mentioned one important part, which is privacy. Uh, so you will be able to choose who you let into your world. Otherwise, you know, you have too many intruders. So that's certainly something interesting. Uh, curation rating stores, agents, etc. These are all uh, available in today's world. And in the metaverse, of course, these will be uh, happening as well. And finally, experience. Um, just like now with the COVID-enforced uh, stay-at-home, work-from-home, uh, games have exploded and social networks that are based on digital networks are very, very key right now to maintaining our sanity and interacting with the world out there. So games, social, esports, etc., uh, all these are going to be very important in the metaverse as well. <clears throat> so what are the technologies that will impact this? Uh, you can think about all these uh, virtual mainstreaming. Uh, so you have uh, machine intelligence, AI is very important. Uh, simul anything that can simulate reality, uh, the AR, VR, etc., XR, uh, and increasing uh, iterations of these uh, and improvements in existing tech. Uh, open platforms, like I mentioned, it has to be collaborative and open because one company cannot create everything by themselves. So if there's an open architecture, it's much easier for other creators to come in to, uh, to help in the creation of it. One simple example is like Wikipedia, right? From nothing, an open sharing network uh, is able to grow so much human knowledge, right? Just by allowing people to contribute. So uh, similarly in a metaverse, this has to be uh, available for the, the creators as well. Cybernetics is gonna be very interesting. So cybernetics basically is a combination of your, uh, how the machine will take your human body to get into a, this kind of a metaverse. So wearables and mobile technology and integration of your sensory uh, uh, networks to connect to your, so your sensory and neural and computer networks will be connected. So this is very interesting, right? So you can watch all those sci-fi movies from the past and this is really happening already. Uh, acceleration of dis distributed networks. This is very important because without the base layer infrastructure, you can't even get to this, this kind of a technology level. So the world that... Uh, is developing faster, the 5G, 6G networks, those are the ones that will be able to be at the forefront of these uh, new technological improvements. A walled garden ecosystem means uh, that people can create something within this metaverse in a safe environment, right? So more applications will be made available to allow the creators to create and to modify and interconnect within this, uh, this so-called walled garden. Uh, local platforms, so, um, as with now, there are increasing uh, iterations and manifestations of open networks where the hardcore uh, tech is already created behind. And then uh, creators can just use blocks that are already created uh, to create other things, right? So they don't need, uh, you wouldn't need any hard, uh, hard skills in terms of coding. You just need to uh, drop and drag the different tool sets and modules that you want in order to create something. So those are what we call the local platforms. Uh, blockchain, of course, is very important because this is one of the main drivers of the new uh, digitization of the world, as well as the new um, industry adoptions of uh, a lot of different applications. So blockchain adoption uh, to connect into the metaverse is going to be very important. There are a lot of projects now that are already starting uh, this journey. I've already created parts of uh, like, like Decentraland, for example. That's another virtual environment, right? Uh, so that's a blockchain project. Okay, so I think that brings me to the end. This is a very quick overview about uh, the entire uh, world that, uh, that Mark Zuckerberg and uh, Facebook, uh, now called Meta, is creating for us. Uh, so once again, there's nothing really magical or difficult to understand about a metaverse. Uh, it is essentially today's in improved technology showing you what Second Life and movies like Ready Player One can bring to the actual real world. And over the last two years with COVID and post um, changes in our living environment, you can see the, the benefits of this. With the metaverse, 
the, the thesis is that people can really stay at home, don't even need to go out, just get their avatars to sit in the meeting room with other people. So those who want to work in the office, you can physically be there. And then in a, a hologram will appear of your coworker in the seat next to you. So you can actually see him on the table as well. So of course you need a, a device that can beam, you know, the, the holographic uh, images of people. Of course they need it at home. So all these kinds of devices are going to be a very uh, integral part of the metaverse. Uh, so you will be able to interact as an avatar within the, the virtual world. But at the same time, within the virtual world, you can uh, also meet actual real people, right? If you are physically proximate to them. So it's a combination of the real world, Augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, et cetera, right? All, all these things are coming together to create this new metaverse that Facebook is uh, wants all of us to adopt. Uh, of course, um, Mark Zuckerberg is also saying social networks is very important. And that's a basic founding uh, thesis of uh, Facebook, right? So uh, these are all important things because we are all going to be interconnected on, on a digital platform. All right, so enough said from me. Uh, we'll hear from the other speakers. And if there are any questions for me, we can take it after uh, during a networking session. All right, thanks. Hello, everyone. Thanks again for having me again. It's always a pain to be after Malcolm because he says already everything I want to say. And then I have to redesign my presentation while he is speaking. Thank you, Malcolm, for that. <laughs> You're always on top of things. That's the issue. So last time I was here already talking about... Um, what we have been doing for the last months and the feedback was uh, extremely good or um, people seem to be very very curious so to break it down i mean i'm I, I i used or i still i am working for dash it's payment you know it's like good old og cryptocurrency stuff then came DeFi along in april 2020 i would say maybe january to april 2020 had a good ride until beginning of this year, then everything became crazy. Suddenly we have the metaverse and we have like all these games, play to earn mechanisms coming up. And of course, all the NFT craze. In a way, I would say, you know, all kind of this yielding on NFTs is like a you know, next level of DeFi and consequential next step. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, if you go out and play a game, based on NFTs, you do nothing else than investing time in order to get yield, what you would have done in DeFi to put yourself in a liquidity pool. So from the mechanics behind, it's kind of very much the same with the difference that you have to put time and effort to yield on your investments in that case. And this makes it a very special thing. So again, I'm uh, Felix from Dash. Now we just founded a new project called Space. It's a metaverse, a commerce-focused metaverse. I will show you around in a minute what that is and why we are doing that. And we have a company called Futerio, uh, which is a consulting company based, or I am based in Thailand. So we are right now, we hired around 150 people in the last month that play Axis Infinity for us and our investors. Because it's... It's really what I said. Axis Infinity like uh, started that hype of play to earn games. So you can buy, um, it's a game that works on, on monsters playing against each other or teams of monsters playing against each other. It's always a three monsters versus three monsters game. And you have to buy each of these monsters uh, as an NFT. So in order to play, you need a team of three of three NFTs and every NFT costs you like one that really earns money, I would say costs you, let's say around 600 to 700 bucks. So roughly you will spend 2000 bucks to have a team of monsters that can really um, earn you money. You earn in a currency called SLP. When you fight against another team and you win, you earn these currencies. There's also some other mechanics where you can earn that. But basically, you play with these monsters, you earn SLP. It's quite realistic to come to, let's say, 200 SLP per day. If I'm not mistaken, the price must be somewhat around 10 cents per SLP. So that's like 20 bucks. Um, a day easily on this investment, right? So if you um, have 20 bucks a day uh, times 30, that's that's around 600 bucks on a $2,000 investment. That's not a bad um, ROI for a game. Um, one, yeah, um, obviously you, you always you know when you do this, there's always kind of um, a trade-off between is it really fun to play or are, am I just grinding the game for money? 
And I guess this is where, you know, where a lot of the recent games kind of struggle to come up with really cool concepts that make it fun while you earn and don't lead to a situation where you kind of have, you know, the new t-shirt factory is Axis Infinity. That's, you know, not actually what we had in mind, I guess, when, when we were designing these games. So, no, I guess that's, that's where it's going. Um, Malcolm mentioned a lot about the history of the, of the metaverse. You know, I remember when I was a kid, there, there was this movie called The Lawn Mover Man. And every time in all these kind of science fiction movies, it always ends up in, in the main character, like saying, you know, the world is too boring. Bye bye. See you in the metaverse. And then he's like off and, and, and gone for good. I think that was kind of the, the vibe. I think what we are now seeing is, you know, there's a lot of development, which is in a way only consequential that, that this is happening. I mean, we coming, we came from a world was like, you no, know, like there was no internet even when you, or, or just the beginning of the internet when you already thought about the metaverses and when you had something like Second Life, which was really like, it didn't look good. It was very clunky. You can't really do business and you have like a closed in-game economy. I guess then we came to the point around, what was that, 2004? with uh, World of Warcraft launching to have like huge um, MMORPG uh, kind of games where I guess that's a feeling mostly only boys understand, but you enter this game and three years later, you realize that you lost a lot of friends because you were like too sucked into playing. And uh, I see many people who really can relate with that, you know, and this is, I, I guess, honestly, one driving factor where also these 3D metaverses are very, let's say, they pull attention of certain people who tend to be gamers, because it's really a very, you know, very similar experience, I think, where, when you go in there. And I got to say, the only point I disagree with, Malcolm, is you said, you know, it's not magic. It's not magic. Yet, I just had a very magical experience two weeks ago. When I entered the metaverse, our own metaverse space, where we had our, after the first, you know, all hands on team meeting with around 40 people, we entered in that metaverse. And it's really, you know, it's not only you have your, your alter ego in there, um, in this metaverse. In fact, let me show, let me share my screen. I show you my alter ego, which is here. This is my alter ego. Can you see my screen guys? Not okay. Malcolm's laughing. He can see it. <laughs> cool. So this is my my avatar from Ready uh, Ready Player Me is the name of this website where you can now make your avatar, make it look like you, upload a photo, and you can move this avatar around in different metaverses. So it's really like a fun thing, and of course I want to have that, right? But maybe also I want to be a pink unicorn or maybe i want to be you know an old grandpa or whatever i fancy the point is you know you can now go in there you can create yourself an alter ego and you can start doing stuff and you even can start making yourself a career making yourself a business becoming an influencer not only with the real person you are but also with the alter ego or in combination with all of that right so i think Coming again back to this history, you know, we came from, you know, very early experiments to massive multiplayer online games with like millions of highly addicted players to a situation now or and, and this in a situation where you had closed in game economies that were massive, you know, I mean, just look at the number of, of Chinese farmers of Chinese gold farmers in uh, World of Warcraft that were illegally selling gold and in-game items on eBay. You know, and now this is just opened. I was showing the last time our uh, investments into um, Star Atlas. They did, uh, you have to check out that game if you don't know it. It's a massive multiplayer um, MMORPG in space where basically every in-game item was sold for money. So I have to fly a starship in this game and every starship in this game, I have to buy And The starship range, the price of a starship ranges between 50 bucks, 15 bucks and 120,000 bucks. So, and depending what kind of starship you have and how much return you want to generate within the game, you have to invest more, right? And this leads to a situation where now we have these huge guilds of 5,000 players who come together and say, I don't have 
a hundred thousand bucks alone, but uh, together with five thousand other people, we might have that. And they come together, they put money together, and they start playing together. So this is what is happening right now in the metaverse, and this really made made me think a lot of like uh, a lot of things obviously but um, there's a lot of things happening right now in the market number one i see there's a lot of new people coming into crypto um, and they come because they, they they are gamers and now they can play and earn money so i am i think we're already uh, with five million plus people only in southeast asia of young you know 25 year old usually boys um playing games as a job right and this alternatively to COVID driven economies to bad jobs and 7-Eleven or you know whatever kind of job you want it's a real alternative for them but now we are already at a tipping point I believe and this is exactly now coming to our new project what we want to want to build you know my perspective is actually the metaverse and this is probably the reason why Facebook also did it it's not it's more than a game and it's more than a virtual reality for me it's like the internet you know it's just the internet is for me not another kind of dimension or something it's just part of my life in fact if you take away my iphone and i don't have google maps anymore you know like what do i do ask people for the way like, don't be crazy right or you know don't use an uber or something it's just not it's not an option anymore you know it was an option maybe 20 years ago but now it's not anymore so um what does that mean? It means actually for me, it's just the next evolution of the internet where you put now a 3D layer on the internet and with all the crypto and all the NFTs in the background, you have a million new boss business models and you have a million new jobs to be created. So what we want to do is really take this play to earn experience out of this gaming realm and say, you know, interact to earn, do business to earn, so we are building a metaverse to provide you all the tools to do all, all commercial activities you fancy. You can build, you know, um, a t-shirt shop, you can do a music live stream, you can in fact host a whole party series, you can make an art exhibition, or, you know, you can build the tools for others um, to build new businesses. And from my perspective, you know, we are just at the start of all this. I mean, in 1998, you know how many web designers were there in 1998 and you know everybody who wanted to build a web page built a very you know rudimentary web page that is in no way comparable to to what we what we can do now it's the same for me with um with the 3d internet there is simply no 3d web designers there's you know it's it's a very tough thing to come around with cool 3d objects or anything even to have the fantasy to build a 3d website like i'm completely lacking it right i mean just imagine a website where you basically like in a swimming pool of water or something no and some stuff is happening around you or you're in a website that is you know beyond the law of physics you know it's just the imagination is the limitation and if then again i fancy myself there with my alter ego pony or with the avatar you see here on the screen you know it's up to me so um long story short i strongly believe the metaverse will be the biggest job market in the next five years because there's simply so much opportunity i strongly believe it completely fits into the narrative we are in right now you know that who goes to an office if you can do home office you know it's so inefficient to go to, to a home office in fact it's so inefficient to find a job and to ask someone with an in an hr department if they can give me a job you know i can just go in the metaverse i can start playing i can start building my own t-shirt shop and i can remix some nfts in there you know so it's on me and now as a quick demo this is what we're going to launch in the next days so don't tell anybody i showed you already but this is the uh, metaverse we will be launching with. So here you, we will build some shops. You can you know, um, have shows, have education events, have t-shirt shops, have whatever. This is just the first example, right? You can look around. It's like this Bauhaus looking city. And we can go here in, in the desert over there where we build kind of a festival area, like a bit of a Burning Man experience. And we're just setting up now the first experiences. And in fact, everybody who's watching that, who has already some NFTs, cool artists, cool DJ friends, cool 
other people who fancy to do any business in the metaverse contact us and we will help you set up something there right i imagine like we can have a i don't know a DeFi show in this tent we can have a um a techno set in this event in this tent we can have a jazz live concert in this tent right this you know it's up to us to make something cool out of it and this is again you know now if i show you this it's like yeah okay but I can tell you something, if you stand there with 40 people, then I'm sure you have this magical moment, the same like I had it, because it's really something different. I see someone, I can interact human to human with someone, voice first, it's not chat first, you know, it's like you go in there, you talk to people, the people who stand next to me will be much louder than the people who are far away. It's such a new internet experience that was really like I had a... Um, yeah, a magical moment <laughs> of my internet career. And I just thought, you know, it's like now I'm finally at the next level of the internet where still you know, something is really, really different here. And, and I guess really the point I was always missing and never aware that I was missing it is the internet is, you know, it's supposed to be social, but in fact, you know, Facebook is just like, you know, a chat program at the end of the day, or I interact on my own stream liking other people content you know it's not the same than i tell you know here right in your face hey great presentation great job something like that you know something really completely different if i stand next to you i give you direct feedback or i can ask you questions i mean how many times i sit in front of my computer and so angry because you know something is not working and i wish i could ask someone but no what do i have to do i have to go to google and two hours later i still have the same computer problem right it makes me crazy so Imagine just here, there is a tent where people hang around with computer skills. I can go there and can say, hey, come on, I give you five bucks, you solve it for me. I would be so happy so many times in my life. So I hope uh, you feel the same and I hope you get a little bit of the uh, ideas we are circling around. Space is the name of our new project. I'm a co-founder. In fact, I'm the chief of crypto in space. My mom is very proud of me about that. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, reach out to me as always. Thank you for having me, guys. It was a pleasure. Um, my name is Sanjin Kim, and my name is hard to pronounce, so you can simply call me Kim Kim. That is kind of my nickname. So, um, all right, thanks for the sharing the screen. So thanks to Mr. Tan's and Mr. Mago's presentation. They really gave me some great insight in Metaverse. And today I'll be sharing with you what's going on with Metaverse in South Korea and some of my insight on that. So in South Korea, we have two major metaverse platforms, which is Jupiter and Eplan. Next slide, please. Thanks. So both of them are not game metaverse. They are more like social media metaverse. Users in there interact with each other, consuming digital content, just, just like Mr. Mago just told us. And most of the contents and the events that are happening in this metaverse are not user-driven contents. It's all corporate-driven. For example, DGB Financial Group in South Korea, it's a huge financial group, opened a gallery for MG Generation. And also HANA Bank did their employee training in both Epito and Eplan. And also various job seminars and college ceremonies were held and some even created their stores in Metaverse. Next slide, please. So CU, one of the major convenience stores in South Korea is even considering integrating payment and delivery system in Metaverse. So simply you can buy something in Metaverse, then the things will be delivered to you immediately, even in real world. And even an art festival will be held in Metaverse and their items, clothes, and makeup for metaverse will be also sold in OpenSea. And other than Jupiter and Eplan, next, please. Jikbang, Korean real estate venture company, created their own metaverse platform called Metapolis. And they made their all employees, around 270 employees, to permanently work at home using their metaverse. And also some are creating their own metaverse for educational purpose or entertainment purpose and even simulation training purpose as well. Next, please. 
So based on current trends in South Korea, uh, there are three facts that we can get from it. First, it's all corporate driven contents as of the moment. The corporate regard metaverse as another new channel to approach their customers to offer their traditional services and products in real life. And lastly, they use it to substitute offline events and activity for online event and activity. And based on those three facts, we can get one insight um, from them that they are trying to link reality to virtual world to expand customer experience. They're focusing on customer experience and seeing Metaverse as another new channel result to Korean government forming Metaverse Alliance in last May was in the previous uh, presentation. The, so the Metaverse Alliance has 460 Korean companies in the Alliance. And what's interesting, in, what's interesting is those companies in Alliance are not Metaverse platform company or game companies. They were mostly traditional companies like Samsung, LG, and most of major financial institution, major e-commerce companies, and in industrial company like Hyundai, they are the ones that are in alliance as well, let alone education, broadcasting, advertisement, healthcare companies as well. So the companies that are very related to customers real life are the ones in the metaverse alliance in Korea. So we narrow it down to six types of metaverse and companies below each category are the uh, metaverse companies working on it and due to metaverse's nature of openness, of course, each of the area is interactive with uh, one another. But this category states what they are initially specializing in. So each of the categories is working on metaverse and trying to transfer our lives into virtual world in respective areas. But as competition between metaverse companies develops, what they will be needing is content digital contents that would lock users in the metaverse to make them stay longer in their metaverse so that they can consume contents. So to sum up, metaverse is booming in South Korea and also the money is following after it. Next slide, please. For example, retail investors are putting their money in metaverse ETF, about $100 million just in a week. And Neighbor, the parent company of Bikido, the previous uh, metaverse that I just showed you, attracted 170 million US dollars from SoftBank. And even metaverse startup companies, they were able to make it to serious fundings as well. So in conclusion on metaverse, now we know that corporates are developing and expanding their metaverses in an extremely real life related way and there follows extreme competition. So the eventually, the value of the digital content, well, due to NFT technology, will automatically grow in the future. That's what we're thinking. So today, um, I would like to introduce a case study on Liveberry, the company that protects uh, digital contents and creates secondary digital contents. Library does four things. First, it detects illegal use of digital content and protect copyrights of live streaming services with our pat patented technologies. Second, it archives those live streaming, and an analyze the data we obtain and offer better content management. Third, it plans and invests in original content to secure original content. And based on them, lastly, library creates secondary digital contents from original contents. Thankfully, library was able to make a great partnership with major broadcasting companies. And we even have an experience working with major entertainment companies in Korea. For example, in 2019, um, library provided its copyright pro protection technologies in BTS fan meeting in Tokyo. And also um, we had experience working with the Korean K-pop K-pop um, group Eyes One with the our 
protect protection technologies. So library was able to work with those major companies because they want their digital content to be protected. And we are expecting that in the, in the age of metaverse, when metaverse develops more and more and penetrate into our daily life, the needs for protecting digital content will grow immediately as well. That is why we're preparing this. Library also create, creates secondary digital content from original content using NFT. Library merged NFT open platform company called NFTing, which is the first ever NFT trading platform in South Korea and secured major technologies in order to make secondary digital content with NFT. Of course, aside from NFT, Library provides various contents derived from concert, musical, and so on to make users stay in the platform longer, which is explained in the next slide. So we have behind the scene clip, album, and so on. Those secondary digital contents will be provided to users, even in Metaverse or even on our platform so that they can stay longer and consume our digital contents. We are projecting there will be two concerts in the future, in the future of Metaverse. One is copyright concern, and two is how the corporate will make their original contents that will be suitable to Metaverse platform. And because of those two concerns, library is determined to offer two things in the age of Metaverse for the future. One is library protect copyright. Second, library create secondary data contents suitable in metaverse. So that's why we are thinking about the future of the metaverse. And thank you so much. Introduction, Lisha, and such good uh, uh, speeches so far. Uh, I'm not going to give a, a slideshow presentation. I'm going to I'm going to just uh, to speak freely. You know, look you in the eyes. Now that Facebook is building the metaverse, perhaps this is the last time you're going to see somebody real uh, watching back to you. Next time, I'm going to be a hologram, as Malcolm said, and I will pop up in your uh, living room or or something else. So, so the big thing, which obviously is the most interesting thing about crypto and the metaverse and everything that's happening right now it's 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 basically internet 3.0 right so so in the 90s a lot of people became accustomed to this new phenomenon internet but nobody really understood where it was going and surely nobody could imagine that internet could become what it has become you know I'm chatting to you. I'm in the outskirts of Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, it's dark outside. I'm on a really bad connection, but I'm talking to people all over the world. And we're building companies and we're working together, irregardless of where we are in, 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 in societies, when we are in life or when, where we are geographically. And I think this is what is the most exciting part is that uh, obviously our known universe, you know, the world, the planet Earth, it's, you know, a few billion people who are connected. But if you think about our interest groups already, like for instance, some people like Max, some people like uh, PC, some people like Banana, some people like Apples, you know, some people like certain things. We, are, we have already built several metaverses, right? Interest-based uh, 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 areas where we meet, but we still meet in old fashioned. And if you think about internet, internet is built by engineers right so what engineers did engineers are usually very non-artistic so what what engineers feel they basically mimic the world of books and put it online right so still today 25 30 years later since the mass adoption of internet we still flip pages right so we're using a method and technology which is two three four hundred years old but we put a glossiness and a technology on it and what's going to happen with crypto now you know the next 5 10 15 years and also in the metaverse is that we're going to use this new smart way of thinking the new uh, technology the fast 5g's but unfortunately we're going to use it on the old mindset and this is the interesting part because usually when a paradigm shift comes, nobody really understands the impact of a paradigm shift. You know, the last major paradigm shift was obviously the internet. 
and the one before was the industrial revolution with electricity. So right now, and this is, you know, the, the, the awesome people watching this uh, webinar and the people uh, speaking, the luckiness of us is that we are in the middle of a paradigm shift. And in the middle of the paradigm shift, it tends to be chaotic. You see that the politics are in turmoil. The world is upside down, right? Everybody's all over the place. It's because the old is disappearing and the new hasn't really started. And we don't really know where we, this is heading. You know, as I mentioned before, the, the industrial revolution with electricity, that's threatened the way of life for a lot of people, right? You know, the candle makers, right? The candle makers didn't like when electricity came. And right now, there's a lot of old type of uh, industries like the bank industry or the traditional ones who are quite um, in fear about what's happening right now with the, uh, this new uh, demographic wave, uh, the new um, democracy wave, I mean, uh, new currencies, meaning that the government's control over people's everyday lives and money and movement and behavior is changing. All of these things are awesome. The big question is, of course, how are we using this? Where will, where will be all of us be in five, 10 years? Uh, what are we doing with this knowledge that you gain today? Uh, what we will do under the, the, the Facebook metaverse uh, umbrella? And surely, and if you ask me, I don't think that Facebook is going to be the one leading the metaverse discussions. I think it's going to be something coming bubbling up from below, you know, something from Penang or Skopje or, you know, uh, Uganda, right? Because right now somebody is taking the technology of today, adapting a, a new mindset to it and will most likely invent a to totally entire industry, almost like, you know, Henry Ford did with the... Um, with his cars because he you know henry ford is famous for one major saying saying that if i would have asked my audience what they wanted if i would have asked my customers what they wanted they would have said told me i want a faster course because they couldn't imagine the car and the car industry and those possibilities and that's what we're seeing right now that's why i mentioned before engineers building internet engineers couldn't imagine where internet was heading so they they, they built something fairly sad and ugly right and a lot of people since then try to improve it and make it deeper and more you know almost like a, a natural universe and of course i love what elon musk is saying a lot of people are considering look there's going to come a point in time where artificial intelligence and humanity merges right there's going to come a point in time where we have implants where we are part robot even if we are one percent eventually you know that's utopian that's crazy but if you look listen to elon musk he says look we are already there we are already have we are already paired with artificial intelligence in our day-to-day day -day lives you know just imagine if you forget your phone at home right you feel that something is missing you even have you know the missing the missing limb syndrome almost like almost when you lose your arm you can still feel your arm so by the definition obviously uh Elon Musk says that we are already in a symbiosis, symbiotic uh, relationship with artificial intelligence, meaning that we, we don't need to um, operate uh, hardware into our brains when we are already have a behavior which is uh, dependent on technology. Of course, the metaverse is awesome, but, but we are talking about it in terms of understanding. And right now we're understanding, uh, we've seen Second Life in 2007, 2008, which was awesome. Basically, uh, it was a totally new universe. Uh, it had its own, it, it had it, its own currency. People could out, come out as gay if they wasn't allowed to come out in their uh, uh, country. Uh, you could change your, um, somebody, uh, one of the speakers said, you could you can pretend that you're older, you can become somebody else. And this is the interesting part about internet is that it allows people to be themselves, right? You can, you can be a poor uh, person from India and you can still build the next big thing. Now um, we see more and more real life usage of, of what, all of us has built and something that i'm extremely excited about right now uh and that's the play to earn type of universes where basically people uh, enter a metaverse or a gaming environment and then they start uh, uh making certain behavioral changes you know either they uh walk their character enough so it you know it hatches almost like in pokemon or they fight each other. And eventually, if you look, for instance, at, at, at Axio Infinity, which is one of the best play to earn games right now, 
it not only teaches a lot of people about crypto and the blockchain, but it also allows you to make money on the crypto on the blockchain. And suddenly we see a huge industry coming up. A lot of people who have money, they are sponsoring kids, they create scholarships. And though these kids are in India and in Africa and Latin America, uh, even, even in Western countries, of course. But what's happening is that uh, wealthy people now sponsor kids to play these play to earn games. The, the kids are playing um, every second week, the play to earn games are paying out dividends or profits. And that profit is tends to be split between those who sponsor and those who are playing, meaning that suddenly you can, you can sit, you know, in, in, in any country in the world and have teams playing for you. While if you are a kid from a uh, uh, Indian suburb or a poor Eastern European country or an African country, suddenly you can make quite a lot of money just by acting online, you know, playing games or evolving a, a avatar or an NFT. And obviously this is extremely interesting. Why it's interesting is because it's early days, right? All of you uh, have already an advantage. And that's huge. You know, having an advantage is always something that you want to have. The advantage is that you are in this webinar, for instance, right? You are already aware about certain names, certain words, certain mindsets, which means that if you want, if you are keen, you can Google, you can, you can go down the rabbit hole. You know, the rabbit hole is very, very, very deep. But a big question is, of course, how are we using this information? Because this information... Um, it's also, you need to do something with it. And also another thing, uh, once again, it's extremely early days. Like the, the sadness of us, all of us being in the industry is that we feel that, oh, it's already done. Oh, it was done in 2017 or 2008 or 2020 or whatever, right? But the point of fact is, and this is a truth, is that less than 3% of the entire global population actually are touching crypto or, you know, internet 3.0 or, you know, the metaverse. So very, very, very few people have yet to hear about this, to understand it, to use it, to come to it. So all of us right now have a huge advantage and we can definitely use this advantage. We can offer services, we can offer mindsets, we can teach people, we can help democracy projects uh, to rise, we can equalize the world and make money at the same time. And then... <clears throat> Let me tell you about the next big thing, which a lot of people think is the, the golden value. Uh, in the metaverse and in all these projects I mentioned, uh, uh, it's the masses, right? The millions. These are people who have, haven't been really listened to in the last, you know, 50 years, right? We are used to be passive consumers. We are buyers. We are taxpayers if we are good. Um, and we behave, right? We listen to politicians and they do what we tell them. But this massive, massive democracy project, which is internet and which is crypto, this leads to a lot of people suddenly seeing the world differently, behaving differently, uh, getting knowledge differently. And their values increasing, right? right? Right now, I would assume that most of you who are listening to these speeches and this speech in particular, you are on some kind of social media, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitch, uh, TikTok, Instagram, whatever, right? You, you might be a consumer that you are just browsing and watching, or you could be a creator, you know, you create content, you upload images, you create reels, you create TikToks, or you are a super influencer who affects, you know, you can reach tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. But... A lot of people have worshipped the big guys, right? The, the people at the top. This is something that has been built in our DNA, right? We are animals. We are always looking out to the alpha in our flock. Um, and the same in the internet, right? So, so right now we see a huge wave where the common man is becoming valuable. Why Facebook is building meta, uh, Metaverse is extremely simple. You know, Facebook knows all the data of everything in the world. They have a billion people daily. You know, just suck on those words for a second. A billion people daily using Facebook platforms, you know, which is WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, or, or the other services that Facebook has bought or provided. But that's a billion people. And all those people, a billion people are creating something, right? They're creating either data, giving data to uh, the, the metaverse, or they're creating content. 
So in this day and age, we see more and more that the micro people, the micro influencers, the regular people become the true value. So we have now with the Technicorum and some of the, uh, the, the most uh, famous Instagrammers, YouTubers and celebrities and influencers from Northern Europe and um, Scandinavia, Dubai and Somalia and uh, some from Asia. We're creating a tool and a new type of currency for the big influence industry, not the super influencers, not the Kardashians or those people who already have, you know, uh, payment services and they make a lot of money, but for the micro influencers, you know, people like all of us who are reaching perhaps a few hundred, a few thousand people, we are extremely valuable because our audience listens to us. Our audience has a direct connection to us and our audience is willing to act on something if we ask them. So the entire advertising industry right now is shifting hundreds of billions of dollars from famous people who can do one shout, but they have a very low interaction, but they've reached millions, to micro-influencers who instead perhaps reach 20,000 people, 10,000 people, 5,000 people. But once you reach them, you can post the same message several times and also start making money. So if you look at... 90, sorry. 90% of the um, people who are, 99% of the people who are using social media right now are passive consumers, as all of us are, right? We give data, we create content, or we consume content, but we do not get paid, right? So we are the ones doing the work, but nobody's paying us. So Influentia is a project who has three major steps. One is, of course, to connect and collect all the micro influences in the world, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of micro influences that nobody cares about right now. We believe that's a future gold mine. And, you know, the advertising industry believes that with us. The second part is, of course, the influence industry doesn't really have a proper industry token. You might pay with a gift card, or I may, I may pay to your mom's account, or I use dollars today, or euros, or PayPal, or whatever. This messiness will disappear. Um, and in the metaverse, in, in interest-based uh, universes, you will see also the need of niched, uh, focused, and dedicated industry tokens. So we believe that the influential token will definitely be one of the preferred currencies in the influencer industry and definitely the, the preferred currency in our metaverse. So another thing that we're launching, which I think is extremely interesting, we are mixing uh, NFTs with play toward the things. So basically we're gonna allow any influencer uh, based on their ranking to receive uh, a few avatars, which we create for them. They sell these cheaply to their followers. So their follower, followers will be able to game with them, to evolve them, to uh, buy skins for them and to get connectivity to their celebrity or the influencer they're following. So that in, it in itself creates a type of meta universe where the fans and followers can connect to their uh, influencers or their celebrities. And at the same time, we see that it creates a, a new economic infrastructure where micro influencers, influencers can, make, can make money, influencers can make money on the behaviors of their, um, their, their um, fans. And it creates a high connectivity and a lot better advertising. So as a conclusion, first of all, we have to be, we have to consider ourselves lucky because we are living in a day and age where this is, you know, the beginning of something huge. And if you are lucky to be early in a paradigm shift and you get it and you can do something, whatever it is, you are going to definitely succeed. Even if you don't make a lot of money, you will succeed on, you know, creating a brand name, uh, getting knowledge or, um, or you know, just having an edge over everybody else. And once again, less than three percent of the world's population are involved in crypto as of today. You know, even even Sweden, which is one of the most advanced countries in the world tech-wise, very very few people actually have bought or traded crypto, or even have an understanding or an interest in it. So, as a summary. First of all, we are very, very lucky that a company like Facebook is painting the way, you know, that's a positive and a negative, but it shines on this. Uh, the, the crypto world is getting more and more accepted, uh, uh, adopted and implemented. And we will come to a point of no return, which I think we already have passed, where you cannot not address Bitcoin, blockchain or crypto. And the third, which I'm most passionate about is that when you put the millions in charge and when you empower the millions not only you can make a lot of money 
as we all want to do, right? That's why we, we build businesses. Every business is built to make a profit. But also we can see that we can lift people out of poverty. We can give a power and a voice to those who don't have it. And for me, this is the huge drive because if you only want to do money, yeah, you might do it successfully for a while. But if you want to change the world and you, if you are honest about it, it feels slightly better to go to your job every every day and it feels slightly better to to grind and it feels slightly better to risk and to invest and to take time for other things because you feel that you're doing something uh, uh, awesome right now i'm comparing this day and age with either the early 90s or the late 1800s where you know those paradigm shifts change Change, change societies in, in their core. So sorry that I spoke a bit too long, but I'm very, very passionate. Uh, thank you for listening.